Have you ever felt? Are you listening? <laughs> Damn. All right, uh, installing the Yak Power 8-channel switch system on a Old Town Autopilot 136. So the first thing I did is I drilled a hole. This is a 12-inch gap here. Figured out the middle. My uh, control wire and power all in one is offset the center a little bit. So we figured out where that was, but we've got everything centered for the most part. So what I've done, I've got the hole for the power. We've inserted this, pushed the power cable into the hull, leveled it as best as I could. And I drilled a pilot hole for the left-hand screw. And now I'm going to drill a pilot hole for the right-hand screw. And we'll screw that in. So I'll drill my second hole, then we'll screw everything tight. Before we do that, I'm going to use Cicaflex instructions call to put some on the gasket on the back side of this just to fill in any, any gaps to make it more waterproof or to ensure that it's waterproof. Drill my two pilot holes for our mounting screws. Now I'm going to clean off my marks with acetone, clean up the area with acetone so our Cicaflex can bond or adhere to that uh, polyethylene effectively. So we'll just clean up. I'll take my marks off here. Clean where I'm going to apply that secret flex. So measurements for my holes. If you're going to, if you want to mount it where I mounted it, from the edge we are. It's four and an eighth for each pilot hole from the edge, roughly. Four and an eighth will give you from each side will give you a pretty good mounting spot, and that's going to be for the hole for the wire is about five and. A nine sixteenths to center, roughly five and nine sixteenths for that hole. If you wanted to center it fairly close, so Cicaflex is a marine grade caulking and bonding agent that I use for bulkheads on sea kayaks, primarily polyethylene ones, uh, to reseal the bulkhead. It's got great waterproof characteristics. Cures in I think twelve hours. Uh, gets tacky I think within a couple. Um, but it's gonna it's gonna create a very good waterproof seal for this around that hole. So I'll be right back. I want to use both hands for this part. So give me a sec. We are mounted and screwed in. You can see a little caulking on the back, and I guess that's why they want you to put it on there to see it around that gasket there. But sealed. I'll let it cure. That's installed. Wiring's into the hull. Next, I guess, is to drill and install our plugs for our various electronics that we're going to want to remove at various times so one of them is going to be i'm not going to run this we're going to go battery in the hall i think i'm going to keep my weight a little low in the boat so i don't need that So we're going to need to drill, figure out the holes for these guys and make sure we're long enough how long are 12 feet. Oh yeah. Okay. Next is going to be plugs here at the back. I just got to figure out where I'm going to go. Oh, well, I got into it tonight. Started listening to the Meat Eater podcast and forgot to show you guys what I was doing. Anyway, so we have, I have how many? Five of these plugs. I just want to distribute avail like power available, I guess. Um, and that's probably going to be on one Y. Uh, I've got plugs. We have power. Two back here for uh, navigational light. One for camera. I have two water, uh, uh, a waterproof USB port that I'm going to put up here somewhere for a camera. For our tournament fishing, we need to take pictures. I am putting a uh, four inch 
yak attack rail here and a four inch yak attack rail on the opposite side. That's where I'm going to be, uh, give me an option if I want to use the uh, pan optics on the right side of the boat. Issue I have with that is I don't know how much trouble I'm going to get in with the anchor trolley when I'm doing that. So I'll have the option, if I'm not using my anchor trolley, if I'm just using spot lock, then I can use it on this side. If I am using the anchor, I'm going to be fishing off the left side primarily. I cast with with primarily my right hand, but I cast over my left side of, of my body. So I may end up in the end mounting pan optics on that, routing the wiring. I'll put a through hull kit over here and running the wiring through the hull up to my plotter head. And then my power is going to be right here. Um, we've put a plug up forward here. That's going to be, I've got uh, Navarra fishing uh, handle coming for the front. I will be mounting, uh, we had a rail blaze uh, mount here for camera, for GoPro. That's going to go off the bow, off that handle, I think is what I'm going to do. And then my, I'll have the other one at the stern, and that's going to give two angles. And we're going to route everything, like I said, into here. I have wired up the plotter already to go into my switch. My two stern uh, port and starboard plugs are labeled here. Plotter, bow, uh, stern port, stern starboard. Here's our switch gear. I bolted it to a sheet of polyethylene. Our battery we're gonna use for our electronics power, separate from, and it's gonna be separate from the, uh, the pan optics black box is gonna be on a separate plate. I just try and separate stuff to, as I said in the past, kind of limit the uh, interference between the two. All right, so uh, again, we're waiting for the Y connectors for our uh, yak power, but uh, another thing that's going to be run into the system and subsequently into my switch here are deck lights. So if I'm gonna fish at night, um, obviously I don't want bright white LEDs, so I've gone with uh, red LEDs, and I'm going to situate them where hopefully most cases are not going to shine directly into my eyes because we don't want to uh, affect my night vision. So I'm putting them kind of behind the pedals here and here forward. And then I'm probably going to put two, like one here and one uh, right here. And I'm just trying to think this over and make sure that, or I might put them right here and there. And that way they're shining forward, not right into my eyes. I like that idea better. I'm also trying to put them in places where I'm not going to hit them and damage them uh, as I fish and whatnot. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm kind of taping up, making my own lines for the uh, for the LEDs. Uh, we're going to run them. We're going to put them into the SAE connector. So I'm going to put, I'm still trying to think this through, probably one SAE connector for the two on the left side, run them down and in, and then the two on the right side gonna run them down and to a one common SAE connector because I've only got four left. So there'll be two there and I might put two lights in the tank well. I'm not sure yet, but if you're fishing at night and you wanna see stuff back here, it probably wouldn't hurt. So I'm gonna make a decision on that, I guess. Something else that came, I'm not putting this on the Yak Power because there's no need to, or is there? So I want to shut that off. I may put this on its own. I don't know. It might go on with all of my plugs, maybe. But that's the heading sensor for the Minn Kota. It just allows it. It allows uh, the jog feature, so you can jog. It makes the uh, the GPS a little bit more accurate, essentially, in that it knows what way you're heading, instead of kind of where you are and not how you're oriented. It, it essentially gives the GPS. A compass feature so it knows what's going on so that came today while I'm putting in these LED lights uh, so that's that's where we're at with yak power so yeah I might figure something out here I'll look at what I've got for circuits and available left and we'll go from there so we have on our 8 channel yak power system we have uh, power for the camera. Uh, actually, that's going to be, I think I've got, I got to look. Either power for the camera there or power for the anchor light, all around white light. And then the opposite here. We have 
the Minn Kota heading sensor. We have the micro, uh, power pole micro. Separate, I guess the power pole micro does not go through the uh, Yak power. We also have the Garmin LiveScope GLS 10, and this is the uh, LVS32 transducer. So the Yak Power we installed. I guess this is the only thing I didn't really do a lot of uh, video of. So we have our GLS 10 over here, Velcroed in. I've got the galvanized square tubing, trying to level it somewhat. Then we have an eco-worthy 30 amp hour battery here, powering the whole setup. Over here, I don't know if you can see it very well, is our uh, Yak Power 8 channel and a 50 amp relay. So the 50 amp relay is keeping our live scope stuff separated from all the other items on that uh, on that switch. So that's running there. I'm going to tell you right now there's more wires in this boat than in my truck. I have a deeper appreciation for wiring of of uh, automobiles, I guess, and boats and things like that. On that system, we've also installed LED lights, uh, deck work lights for night fishing, uh, especially at Reverse and Falls for stripers um, or wherever else I want to fish. Those are in there. We have power up front uh, on on it. So the the cameras front and stern, the bow and stern, and the heading sensor are all on the same circuit. We have our Garmin, which I didn't bring out. I was going to bring out and leave it out here, but. Uh, our nine inch head here with all of our wiring from that uh, pan optics and from our, our transducer down below. But the Yak power is finally complete. We have a few odds and ends left, uh, parts from Yak Attack. And I believe, so this is an addition here too, catch aluminum with the 32 inch. Um, probably not gonna be big enough for muskies obviously and I don't know what the guys do for that but the only other thing I need is a muskie and striper uh, net because this isn't gonna be big enough for that and uh, yeah that's that's it we're we're at a standstill nearly complete the build so this is it for now guys thanks for watching bye bye thanks for watching if you like what you watched please subscribe to our channel. We're working very hard to make meaningful content like this for you. Also, hit the bell button down in the corner to get live updates as we upload content. If there are paddling or outdoor related subjects you'd like us to cover, please contact us. We would love to cover them for you. And if you're looking for really cool outdoor and paddling related pictures, please check out our Instagram feed and subscribe there too if you like what you see. Thank you very much.